Hello, sports fan. This is Stephen Hill for Sports Choice Plus. I'm going to bring you a very special breakdown. I'm going to be covering the top five most improved teams this offseason through trades or either through free agency. Before I get right into that, I'm going to make sure that you're up to date with the YouTube channel so you can get all the updates and all the breakdowns. Without further ado, let's get right into it. This offseason has been crazy. We've seen a lot of faces that we know that are not longer, no longer in the same place as we knew them as, um, but they're new teams, new schemes, Free agency began. Everybody started jumping from different divisions to same divisions to different things. And now we're starting to put pen to paper to see who had some of the best improvements this offseason. We're going to start number five. Number five is very simple. They found a signature guy. They found the guy that they were looking for through free agency. They identified somebody. They made the potential move to get him. Uh, I'm talking about the Pittsburgh Steelers. They looked at Russell Wilson and said, hey, we need this. We need this guy as a leader. They planned on having him and Kenny Pickett do a battle for supremacy uh, as far as who's going to start. And it didn't work out that way, but they got rid of Kenny Pickett at the same time and pick up Justin Fields. Let's talk about it. You, you pick up two quality quarterbacks versus not having one in the, the, the season. So you got to keep in mind the, the Super Bowl winning quarterback, Russell Wilson, and the young upcoming pup, Justin Fields, who sits behind him. And there's potentially no quarterback situation. There's no, they've come out and said Russell's going to start. So, you know, he has time to get in his groove and find his place. And if he doesn't work out, Justin Fields is there in the wings. So you have potentially two starting quarterbacks. Patrick McQueen. Uh, Patrick Queen, excuse me. Luring him from the Baltimore Ravens. One of the missiles off that defense that switches locker rooms. When you're thinking about how special he was for Baltimore last year and how they got him on a bargain, that's one of the things that you look at for the Pittsburgh Steelers making calculated moves. And, you know, that's what made their offseason, you know, so impressive. Coming in number four, the Bengals. Simply getting Joe Burrow back. Let's talk about it. Getting rid of Joe Mixon, who was unhappy with his contract situation and adding Zach Moss into that situation. Um, getting the tight end Mike Gusecki from uh, the Miami Dolphins. It's a better pass catching tight end. They need more pass catchers. You know, T. Higgins may not essentially stay. But you got to think, they're probably going to get something from T. Higgins or either he's going to stay and play on the franchise tag, which is a win-win situation because T. Higgins not only is a phenomenal wide receiver, but he's a good second punch to uh, uh, Jamar Chase. Trent Brown, when you pick up Trent Brown and you also look at you know him plugging in at the right tackle position, they can mix and match a left tackle position. They have guys that are going to be there for the long haul. So you're looking at the next three to five years being locked down and the Bengals offense being secured. Joe Burrow gets another decent tackle um, on the team, and they improve. Uh, and I think that, you know, simply Joe Burrow staying healthy and him having offensive linemen of quality elk is the benefit. You know, you can't get too much better as Joe Burrow coming back as your quarterback versus having a backup that's leading the way every single week. So that's why the Cincinnati Bengals come in number four. Coming in number three. This was tough because, you know, it could have been any other way, these top three teams, but I have to put the Atlanta Falcons there. Them getting Kirk Cousins and them getting a leader at the quarterback position takes them off of the hot seat of them potentially striking out and not having a quarterback. When you think of the likes of Kyle Pitts at tight end, B. John Robinson at running back, Drake London at wide receiver, they've taken very good care of their offseason and, and been special with signing Kirk Cousins and now allocating money for free agency. Now you're looking at the draft. They have a top 10 pick and they can go anywhere with that pick. They can go defense, offense. They can go uh, 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 tight end. They can go wide receiver. They can do a number of things to where the offense will benefit, the defense will benefit, and they'll still be in a position to make moves still in free agency. And you like how they have a budget available. They didn't just pay Kirk Cousins all that money and, and, and do that. But you got to think, with them using Kirk Cousins a little more than what they did for uh, the last couple of years that, that the other quarterbacks were used, this offense could potentially explode. When you look uh, at B. John Robinson not being really used last year, him being used is going to help this offense in so many different ways. Using Kyle Pitts, I mean, they just had a, a growth of weapons they weren't actually using. So that's a part of what was baffling about Arthur Smith's offense last year because they didn't use a lot of their Kyle Pitts or B. John Robinson when they literally had monsters all over the place. Uh, coming in number two, the Jets. I'm not going to waste any time. Aaron Rodgers coming back to this team gives them the chance to win the Super Bowl. When you look at Tyron Smith and you look at them adding an offensive lineman that potentially can hold it down, if they can make sure that he has balance 
to where he's not playing hurt and he's doing things like the Cowboys had him doing, practicing off to the side every week and not doing any football drills, but being ready for the game. I think this bodes well for them. You got to think, <laughs> no matter what happens, the Jets have to make the playoffs. The owner made it clear. You, it's either you make the playoffs and you win or you're gone. And I think he's talking about everybody. He's not talking about just the quarterback position, not just the coaches, not just the GM. He's talking everybody. So you got to think in mind, this could be the last stop for a lot of people, but it is a good sign to see Tyrod Taylor in the building as a backup quarterback. You'd like to see Tyron Smith at the left tackle position. And in a draft, they potentially could go draft interior offensive linemen. Uh, you, you could also go for a tackle, another tackle, or either a center. They have a number of positions that they can move. Uh, uh, they can trade back and still have enough draft capital to still draft offensive linemen and, or get Garrett Wilson a running mate at wide receiver. Uh, get Sauce Gardner some help on a safety position. They have a number of things that they could do. So they're still, even though they were active in free agency and smart with free agency, they still have some other things that they can go into as well. And coming to number one, being able to upgrade the running back position. I know Swift was pretty good last year, but you got to think adding Saquon Barkley to the mix is something different. Adding an all-pro Pro Bowl player that can run the ball, that can catch the ball, that can block, that can be out in the wides and, and act like a wide receiver, who can actually block and excel and help Jalen Hurts on not only run plays, but only screen passes. Also, he can help with the formations of being stacked in different receiver positions. Saquon Barkley can do it all. He can, he can essentially get 100 yards on a player, he can get you 15. He can go, go get the first down for you. He can go get the, the fourth and two for you. He doesn't have to come off the field. You get a four down running back that you potentially could plug and play anywhere, anytime. You also got to think about this. C.J. Gardner-Johnson, you're getting him back from Detroit, even though he didn't have a good season for them. You're bringing back guys that you should have resigned a couple of years ago, but now you're looking to see, okay, we still have an opportunity to do this. And trading up to get potential picks, I can see that happening. Howie Roseman does some amazing things. You've seen him already make deals and, 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 and get free agents and do things that we haven't seen really all across the NFL. You look at getting Bryce Huff from the Jets. That was big because you got a pass rusher now. You now have a pass rusher that you can move potentially for more picks or either another player. So so you have you have a lot of different you have a lot of different things. Adding Bryce Huff made other pass rushers expendable on that team. So you gotta think, losing Fletcher Cox. I think that's a good thing because he was just older and you know those rotational players are tough to get rid of but you gotta think i think all in all this is the top five teams that essentially are going to do well next season because of the moves they made this off season and i think it's going to bode well for them boosting into next season with a spark so all you nfl fans get in the comment section if you heard your team below definitely check out sports choice plus for all the breakdowns and all the updates and we'll see you on the very next video